In this lesson, we will do our first After Effects experiment. An After Effects experiment is a certain practice task that follows some simple rules and the goal of this task is to play around creatively with different effects and After Effects, to get to know some effects, to learn how they work and to create a creative approach to working with After Effects. Experimenting is very powerful. If you do not take enough time to really play around with new stuff, with new effects, with new techniques, then you may end up doing the same things over and over again, or maybe you only end up recreating tutorials from the internet. And we definitely do not want this. So I would really recommend, and it's also a part of this course, to take your time to really freely play around with After Effects and the outcome is not the most important thing here. So we do not want to create something very fancy or something specific. We just want to play around and the focus here really is on having fun and just doing whatever comes to your mind in this moment. So before I explain the rules for our first After Effects experiment, I want to mention that actually I did not invent these experiments. I found them on a block that's called MotionWorks. And MotionWorks is a really cool block for motion graphics. You can find a lot of information here, also some tutorials and also this experiments category. And here you can find different After Effects experiments. I just picked a few that we will do throughout our course. I also developed my own ideas. But I definitely have to give credit here to John Dixon from MotionWorks, who initially showed me the idea of After Effects experiments. And I enjoyed these a lot and learned a lot from them. So I thought it's a good idea that we implement them in this course. So let's take a look at the rules of our first After Effects experiment. The first rule is create a five seconds long composition. The outcome here should be a still frame. So we do not want to create an animation, but to use a few seconds makes sense because maybe you want to use some keyframes. It's okay to use keyframes, but focus on one final still frame and not on an animation. The second rule is create one solid layer. So only use one layer and apply all the effects to this layer. Use only the following three effects from the generate category. CC glue gun, cell pattern and CC light rays. Then set yourself a certain time limit. It doesn't really matter whether it's 15 minutes or 30 minutes. I would recommend something in between here, but I think it's important that you set yourself a time limit so that you do not spend too much time on these experiments. Because as I said, the outcome, the result is not that important. The focus here is just on playing around, having fun and experimenting. Then use as many instances of each effect as you want. So you can apply as many instances of these three effects to your solid, but do not use more than one solid in this experiment. Experiment with all the values of each effect. And finally, don't try to recreate my example. And this one is kind of important because when I started with these experiments, I found myself that I always tried to recreate the initial example. But I think that this is not the right approach. You really have to free your mind and really get your creativity out by really experimenting. So you don't have to, to avoid it, you know, that it looks similar, but don't focus and don't limit yourself by trying to recreate the example that I will show you. So with all these rules in mind, I will now create the experiment myself. And I really recommend that you do not use this as a step-by-step -step tutorial by following along. Just sit back and watch what I'm doing just to get an impression what this is all about. Then pause the course, start After Effects, take your time and create your own experiment. So now let's get started with the experiment. First of all, I will create a new composition. The resolution doesn't really matter. I will just call this experiment number one. And I will make sure that it's five seconds long and click OK. You see that I use the HTTV 1080p preset here. Now I want to change to my selection tool and I will create a new layer by pressing Ctrl and Y on my keyboard. So I want to make sure that this is comp size and I also want to apply a color. Actually, this color is quite nice. Let's take this blue here and let's click OK. Now I will zoom out a bit and make a little bit more room here for our effect controls panel. 
And now I want to go to my effects and I want to go to the generate category. And here you can find the CC glue gun effect, the cell pattern effect and the CC light ray effect. So these are the three effects that we want to use. In my case, I want to start with the CC glue gun effect and add it to my layer. And you see right now that nothing's happening. Only a very small dot is appearing in the middle. So the CC glue gun effect doesn't do much with its standard settings. What I would recommend to do with the CC glue gun effect is to animate its brush position because then you will see what this effect actually does. So let me animate this brush position. I will simply take my cross here to set the initial position and I will move it up here and set a keyframe move forward doesn't really matter because I do not want to create an animation just that something is happening here and you see already what is happening here now the glue gun will create this kind of a blob or, or paint stroke here now I want to play around with all the settings can increase stroke width density and this is exactly what this is for you just try out each of these values available in the effect and this is the best way how you learn how different effects work so you see that the first parameters didn't do much here so i will enter our style tab and activate the wobbly tab and i think that this can make the whole thing a bit more interesting you see now if i increase this this looks definitely more interesting now. And this is looking pretty cool actually. So let me increase. So we'll play around here a little bit more and maybe reduce the density here a bit. Create a few dots so it looks cool. So this is actually a basic look that I like. So let me take a look at the light settings, what we can do here. You see, I can create a very flat version of this if I turn off the light and I get more highlights if I increase the lighting. This is a little bit too strong so I will reduce it to about 100. Maybe I can change the light color and this doesn't do much here. No, I will leave it. Cancel it. So we can change the light type here from distant to point light and this makes a difference actually. You see now I can move my light over here and get these nice highlights here. So maybe I want to use that. Create a highlight here in the middle. Then I can change the height of the light. This will change the influence of my light. Now let's make this a little bit smaller or a little bit lower, I should say. And then let's take a look at the shading and I can create a really shiny version. This looks quite cool. Diffusion, not too bad. Specular, I want to have a bit of less diffusion, more specular roughness then the specular will be a bit brighter a bit more intense oh. let's make this more shiny not that rough metal also very interesting some really bright highlights here well i think this is okay for now so now i want to add the second effect so let's come up here to our generate category and let's add a cell pattern and you see what the cell pattern does. The cell pattern creates a cell pattern. Yeah, that's the name of the effect and that's what it does. And you can also play around. And I really would recommend to do that with the order of the effects because this can make a huge difference. So you see now if I uh, put the cell pattern effect above my glue gun, then now suddenly the cell pattern gets like bent with the form of the glue gun. If I put it below it, then it has more of a flat feeling. So maybe we want to create something like this. So let's put this above here and now I will enter my cell pattern settings and let's play around here with the cell pattern styles. Take a look at all of the available styles. Oh, this looks pretty cool. Increase the contrast. Nice, nice, nice. Now I can maybe invert it. Also looks quite cool. see what this does here overflow okay wow this looks pretty cool now let's see what we can do disperse oh, this will make it more regular or irregular so dispersion makes sense here the size we can change the size 
also quite a cool effect you see now it nearly looks like a fluid metal or whatever let's decrease this again to make it more interesting to get a little bit more going here something like that now i want to take a look at the tiling options enable tiling doesn't much doesn't make too much difference here because it's very distorted so let's disable this again evolution you could use this to create an animation but we don't want to create an animation right now so i think for now i like this the only thing that i don't like now is that i lost my color so i will come in here again and try to bring some color back by changing the light color let's see whether this works oh, yeah it does so let's bring back the light color now i want to add the third effect and this is the cc light rays effect and you see i have this little crosshair here and then i can create this nice looking light rays you can put it in the middle here where everything is bright and then play with the settings increase the intensity that looks pretty cool change the radius and you see what this does this is also pretty cool this could actually create a nice background so maybe we want to use this as a background so let's let's increase the radius and let's decrease the intensity maybe let's see yeah this actually creates something that gives a little bit more depth i really like this so let's put this in here like so and let's just add a new instance of the light rays effect and let's play around with this one a little bit maybe i want to create some more beams right out of this sphere here more intense this is glowing looks good let's see what we can change here change this then we get more harsh streaks here that looks pretty cool so i could also add some other colors by changing this color from source no and i want to add something like maybe some pinkish glow here why not now let's add another instance or let's duplicate this last instance by selecting it and pressing ctrl and d now let's bring this over to another sphere maybe this one here and let's change the color here maybe some greenish or whatever just to get a bit of variation in here and i want to create a new instance and let's shift this let's say up here in this case we want to use the color from source maybe decrease the intensity a bit and we didn't play around with the the transfer modes yet so the transfer modes are very powerful i didn't talk about transfer modes yet but transfer modes are changing the mixing between effects or also between layers so if you take a look at our layer right here you see that there is this option the mode option the transfer mode and here you have a bunch of different options to mix this layer with other layers of course it doesn't make any sense now because i only have one layer but if you want to blend different layers into each other then you should experiment with the transfer modes the cc light rays effect only offers four modes you see we have none then this has no transfer mode so it will be fully opaque and you see that we do not see any of our other uh, effects applied but if we set it to add then it will add to the other effects lighten is a special transfer mode you see that now the light is not that intense and if we set it to screen that's a bit similar to add but not quite so intense so in my case i think that add is the best option because it really makes everything bright here and let me just create a bit of a different look here just to get some variations here like so okay i will stop here now i didn't take a look at the time now but i think i spent about 10 to 15 minutes and i think that the outcome is quite nice now let me quickly show you how you can export and save your still frame therefore make sure that your time marker is exactly on the frame that you want to export and then come up here to composition and choose save frame as now we choose file you could also choose photoshop layers if you want to save a psd with each layer of your composition being one layer in photoshop now let's create a file and you see that after effects will add 
our composition to the render queue. Now let's change the setting from current settings to best settings because we want to export a full resolution image. Then click on the output module here on Photoshop because I do not want to export Photoshop. What I want to use is a JPEG. So now I click into the format here and use JPEG sequence. But it won't export a JPEG sequence because we chose to export only one frame. So let's click OK here. This is fine. And you see After Effects will create a name that's called exactly as the composition. And it will also give you this hint which frame of the composition, the timecode here, will be exported. So let's click on this and specify a location. In my case, I will just save it in here and I will create a new JPEG in this folder. And then hit the render button. So in the end, I want to show you a few more examples that I created while playing around with this After Effects experiment. So you see this one is actually a little bit similar than the one that I created now, but there are also other options like this one, like a golden look or this one, which is a completely different look. So these are just some examples and now it's up to you. So have fun, be creative and we see us in the next lesson.